Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cecilia and my intention is to inspire you with art and to help you improve your painting skills. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button below to see weekly art videos. Today's video is about how to paint a cat. And for that I used this Spielberg brush in different sizes, this angle brush for the hairs and for the really tiny little details and thin hairs, I used this round brush here. So yeah, I would say grab your paints and brushes and let's get started. I used for this painting a reference photo. So you can choose one as well and use the same process for painting your furry friend. Or if you want to use this one, I can also leave a link to download the image in the description below. Let me know in the comments. First of all, I obviously choose the photograph and then decide whether or not I want the canvas to be vertical or horizontal. Mostly I choose specific color or multiple for the background. When I do a commissioned piece, I usually ask for the color, for example, the favorite one. That works really well because I think the painting speaks even more to them when it includes their favorite color. Colors that I'm using for the cat are simply ivory black and titanium white. For the grays, I just mix them both. And for the background colors, I'm using magenta, purple and ultramarine blue all mixed with titanium white. Then I paint the underpainting with acrylics and make like a sketch of the basic color tones of the cat, the shape and the background. I looked at there is a sort of a light source coming from the background. That means that I paint one area brighter and warmer. In this case it is the upper right corner. I try to be exact as possible, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't match completely, because after that I lay a grid over the acrylic layer. I used to not doing that in the beginning, but I realized that it saves me a lot of time. I think it is a really effective method, especially once you get the hang of it and have a good way to set everything up. If you want a step-by-step -step guide on how I create a grid over a photo in a really easy way that takes only a few minutes, let me know in the comments below and I will show you that as well. As soon as I drew the grid on top of the underpainting, I start with the first layer in oils. And now I really focus on the outer shape of the cat. So I adjust if there is something out of proportion Add a face to the cat, the eyes, nose and mouth and go further into details. But not too much, I don't concentrate on the hairs yet, but on the light and shadow parts within the fur. You can see for example that in the blacks there are some lighter spots, for which I use a grey tone. Also on the left hand side, the grey half of the face, there are slight color differences, which I paint too. And next to the white spot are more details that I take into consideration as well. The benefit of the grid is that you can really focus on each and every square one after the other. This is a lot easier because you can break the detailed photo into small pieces and work from there. I think that helps a lot and you just paint more precisely. And for this first oil paint layer, it is really important that you catch bigger structures within the fur of the cat. For example, the light shine that marks the legs, color differences in the face, and so on. Because, as you can see, the grid disappears with the first layer in oils. That means we need some more points of reference. And that's why we want to get more into details, but not too much, in order to not get lost in every tiny little brush stroke. We still want to keep the whole color composition, the bigger picture, in mind. And then I paint the background. Primarily I try to create a smooth transition between the colors. But this really depends on the technique you want to use.
Then I go on to the next layer and this time I start with the background because I want to have clear edges in a way that it looks like the cat is in front of the background and not vice versa. So I just refine the color tones and the transition of them. I like the blues pretty much so I use the same color tone but for example I paint the upper corner on the right hand side a little bit brighter and warmer and create smooth transition between those two by using medium purple. Then I overpaint the edges in the lower part and I wouldn't paint a straight line. This doesn't look as realistic as you could. Instead I would create an almost blurred and free line. I would paint hairs but not as sharp as for example in the face because you can look at this painting like the way you would photograph the cat. There is always a focus point which is sharper than the rest of the image. And in my opinion, this is important to consider in a painting as well. Because in this way, you create also a contrast within the object. You open a space in the painting and add more depth, which is kind of hard to do when you paint portraits, which basically only contain one object in the whole painting and mostly a solid background. Then I paint hairs. Most of the lower part I can paint just black. But as you can see I marked some grey parts like the legs. And there I paint single hairs. I use an angled brush and grey and paint the hairs in the proper direction. And then I use black and blend those colors and paint some black spots within the grey part. This enables a greater variety and irregularity within the fur. I repeat this process until I like the transition. The focus point is in the face of the cat. That means there are the most details. As the step before, I first paint an irregular frayed edge. There are the least hairs within the ears. I choose pink mixed with black for the inside. And then I paint some longer hairs above. The right side of the face is pretty much the same approach as the lower part of the body. But for the left side it is different. First I look where are the lightest parts, the middle tones and also the shadow parts and paint them. And I focus even more on the details and really look at every color difference. Then I make this fur right next to the big white part below the face. And I highlight the light parts with almost white and then the darkest ones with black and then blend them with grey. And if I want to have even more details, I go over it again with a smaller brush and highlight the whites and darken the blacks a little bit. After that, I paint every single hair with a dark and bright color. I start with the darker grey and paint the hair in the direction of the fur. And then I use a light grey for the bright parts and blend them together. And if I want to emphasize bigger contrast, I use white and black, but only for a few light spots, for example around the left eye and nose. To make the nose 3D, you have to really study it, and you can see that there are some little changes of color. Here the edge is dark and in the middle it is brighter. Same applies for the eyes. You have to really look where are the light spots and the shadow parts. Normally the shadow is in the upper part directly under the upper line. I can also do an eye tutorial if you want to and go more in depth about the science of painting an eye. Let me know in the comments below. The pupils are of course black and there is always a white reflection onto or right next to it. The final step is painting the whiskers. I use titanium white, a tiny little brush and a piece of wood to support my hand. But be careful, I put it on top of the easel, not the canvas. 
That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the tutorial. If so, give it a thumbs up and also if there is a step that I have to explain more in depth, for example how to make a grid or how to paint fur or an eye, let me know in the comments below. I wish you all an amazing day and until next time.